Hello again, this is Bill Miller and today I would like to introduce uh, some concepts of multiple regression. First of all, I'm going to load a file from the National Institute of Standards and Technology called the Longley data. I have saved it as a text file and I will open that file and talk about it for just a moment. The dependent variable y is a number of employees and then there are a number of other variables um, that are used as predictors. You might notice uh, that the last variable is the year of the data collection which is hardly going to be normally distributed uh, since it's pretty much a uh, linear uh, set of numbers. There are 16 cases in all. The other measures are things like uh, a price uh, deflation value and a, a gross productivity measure for the, co for the country, uh, unemployment, uh, military uh, personnel, uh, number in the population greater than 14 and then of course the year of the data collection. One of the things we will observe if we simply calculate the product moment correlation among these variables is a very high degree of correlation. Notice that with the dependent variable you have uh, some correlations that approach 1.0. For example, gross productivity, 0.995. Uh, population greater than 14, uh, 0.994. And the year, uh, and then if you look at um, the intercorrelation among the quote independent variables, you have some very high correlations. For example, X2 and X5 correlate 0.991. Uh, and so you have a problem of potentially of what we call uh, very high uh, interdependency uh, or uh, some people would say, well, most likely these are not really independent variables because uh, one of them can be completely dependent upon the others. In that case, the determinant of the matrix of independent variables may be what we call singular. That is, it uh, may have an indication that there is uh, one or more variables completely dependent on the other variables. If we use this data set in the multiple regression, then we may have a real problem on our hands. Let's see what multiple regression analyses do with this a very strange set of data. The first analysis I'm going to use is called the block entry multiple regression. In this we'll put the dependent variable and instead of putting just a few of them in in multiple blocks I'm going to simply put all of the variables in at one time and then we'll compute the results. I'm going to also place the predicted uh, raw scores and z-scores and residuals in the grid uh, after the computation. Now we do have results and they are very very close uh, within about one thousandth of what is published by the National Institute of Standards and Technology. So this particular program was able to give us the uh, correct results but uh, there are some procedures in this package which will uh, not give you the full results and we'll look at those right now. The next procedure I'm going to analyze with is a multiple regression procedure called the backward stepwise multiple regression. In this procedure all the variables are entered first, all the predictor variables are going to be entered first, 
and then each one that computes uh, that contributes least to the mole regression would be eliminated one at a time. However, when we click on the compute, the error ma uh, message comes up says this matrix is singular. In this case, the determinant of this matrix, which is a number which represents uh, the, re the relationships among the variables, this, uh, this matrix is singular. In fact, it's not exactly singular, but within rounding errors it is. The determinant is essentially zero within a point zero 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 one value. So this procedure would not work with this uh, data that has a high degree of collinearity. The next analysis I'm going to try is multiple regression again. And I'll try the simultaneous multiple regression. In this case, all the variables will be regressed on all the other variables. Unless, of course, there is no inverse that can be calculated. That is, the dependency uh, is uh, too high to calculate. So I'll click on Compute again. And again, we get the matrix is singular. So let's try another multiple regression procedure. In this case, we'll use the popular stepwise forward multiple regression in which one variable is entered at a time depending upon its degree of correlation or partial correlation uh, with the uh, de dependent variable. Again, I'll put all the independent variables in and I'll try to do the calculation. Now in this case, the first step, uh, it shows uh, a variable to enter, and that is the variable x2, gross productivity in the country. Next, uh, we'll look at uh, how far it got. And the final step, it only included two variables. And notice that the multiple correlation is 0 0.990. Uh, we're approaching a 1.0 in this case. Now let's go back and try another multiple regression analysis. In this case, I'm going to do the best fit multiple regression. And again, I'll input the dependent variable and our six predictor variables. And I could change the probability for entry and for retaining the F values for, re uh, or significance values for retaining and entering variables. And I'm not going to change these at this point. I'm just going to click on OK. And we'll look at the combinations of the variables, which appear to be best. And in this case, it has calculated the uh, deviation cross product matrix for getting the inverse. And then in each step, uh, x2 was entered first, then x3, and then uh, four, x3, 4, and 6, and 2, 3, 4, and 6. And we ended up with the best combination of being x2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. x1 was not included. And again, you'll notice the very, very high correlation in this case. And we do have values that are fairly close to the Na National Institute of Standards Technology output. However, not exactly uh, the same. The correlation you see is multiple correlation squared is 0.9955. Again, it approaches 1.0 very closely. So, in summary, it is. Uh, a problem when you have a high degree of covariance among your independent variables. In fact, if there's one variable that's completely dependent on others, the inverse of the matrix is extremely difficult to calculate. In the case of the block entry method, we use the matrix of x transpose x, which is the raw scores times the transpose of the raw scores times the raw scores with an augmented matrix with a last column of 1. 
and it does give us uh, using the singular value decomposition uh, procedure estimates which are adequate uh, in this particular case. Now the last thing I'd like to do, I'd saved the raw scores from the block entry multiple regression. I'd like to look at a scatter plot of the uh, predicted raw scores with the actual raw scores. So I'm going to do an x versus y plot and for the x variable I'll use the original y values and for the y variable, the uh, one that is vertical, I will use the uh, predicted raw scores. And I'm also going to ask for the descriptive statistics, I'm going to plot the means for both variables, I'm going to plot the regression line and a confidence interval around the regression line. So we have the uh, predicted uh, and uh, actual uh, means and standard deviations. Uh, notice the means are virtually the same within uh, a thousandth. Variances are extremely close. Standard deviations are quite close, but uh, the predicted is slightly less, which you would expect in the case of any prediction. Correlation is 0.9977. And the plot indicates that there's a high degree of linearity between the predicted and raw scores, with a couple uh, slight deviations along the way. There are four points that appear to deviate just slightly uh, from the straight line. That's our lesson for today, and if you want to read more about multiple regression and some of the limitations, uh, please check the uh, free textbook which is available from the website. Thank you again for your attention.